This is how kids are raised in Japan. Are you ready, Wolfie? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it's been a crazy last five months. If you don't already know, we just recently released a video of Wolfie and his day in the life yeah. um, a few weeks ago. We will leave links in the description. Kind of like this whole entire process the last five months has kind of opened our eyes to how Japanese raise their children. And we wanted to specifically talk about that in this video. Maiko is Japanese. I am Filipino American, raised in the States. We kind of want to share what we're going through here in Japan, trying to raise Wolfie. You know, some of the surprises that we've had along the way, especially surprises for me because, you know, Maiko grew up in Japan, so she experienced a lot of this. But this is kind of like what the stereotypical way to raise a Japanese kid would be. But again, it doesn't apply to everyone everyone's different. Also we kind of wanted to know what you guys thought about some of these things that we're going to talk about in this video, how it applies to your country, how it relates to your country. And uh, in this video I decided to join because I did experience um, being raised in Japan yeah. and I have Japanese parents yes. <laughs> so I just wanted to share my experience Definitely. with you guys. Before we start like always if you want to help support the channel check out the <laughs> Hold My Me So merch and if you guys want to see what we're doing on the daily check out the Instagram accounts and if you guys have any questions about Japan or your Japan travels, check out the Discord community right here. <laughs> Wanna say hello to everyone before you go? Hey everyone! Hey! Oh. <laughs> there you go, he's such a smiley boy. Love you, bye bye! So this one is kind of crazy. Japanese moms spend only two hours away from their baby each week. Whereas I think compared mm -hmm. to American mothers, they'll spend 24 hours away from their baby. So basically there's like no time ever where the baby is apart from the mom. Mm -hmm. Right? At least in, in Japan. Why do you think that is? Well, in Japan, um, babysitters are not so common. I mean, it's changing like nowadays since like there's more working mothers. But back in the days, I think there's no babysitters. Yeah. And people expect you, mothers, to almost like suffer and like give everything, you know, for baby is actually like a good thing. Yeah. They value suffering of the mother. So basically, <laughs> you're, yeah, you're like a more respected mother. Yeah, like you're yeah. sacrificing for the big babies and yeah, for yeah, the kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of surprising to us, but you know, mm. times are changing, so that's so, not yeah. necessarily the case for maybe some parents these days, but it's still one of the kind of mindsets mm. that a lot of parents have in Japan. So the next thing was, I don't know if it was so much of a shocker, but um, I kind of anticipated it just because of the size of our apartment, mm. but the sleeping arrangements here in Japan and sleeping in the same room with your baby and with your child. In fact, if you've seen our Day in the Life video with Wolfie, then you know that he sleeps in the same room with us, not in the same bed, but he has a crib right next to our bed. I think 88% of kids between zero and three sleep in the same room with their parents and about like 68, 69% of kids like sleep in the same bed as their parents. But I mean, it's common for kids to like be in elementary school and still be staying in the same room with their parents or maybe even the same bed right until yeah. maybe they're like 10 years old or something like for me when i was a kid uh, our house wasn't that big but yeah. since we had three kids yeah we used to sleep together in the same room we call it a kawanoji we sleep like a kawanoji means sleep next to each other so i think one of the differences in japan is they don't have beds they have futon uh, mattresses so, uh. so you have kind of like this bedroom mm -hmm. with tatami mats people just lay out their futon, futon mattresses, mattresses and not just like beds just lined up so right? <laughs> like, like you're in an orphanage. Yeah, it's on the ground. It's on the floor. It's on the ground. Yeah. In our case, like yeah. we moved. My my parents built a new house when yeah. I was in uh, like early elementary school. That's when I got my room. So like I think it really depends on the family. Like yeah. when you get your own room. But yeah. Usually like it happens in elementary school or junior high at the latest, I think. We'll decide as he gets old. He's um, almost six months now, so we'll see. Mm. So this one kind of piggybacks off that one. It's taking a bath with your parents, especially mm. the opposite sex mm. um, and how long they do it here in Japan. So for example, right now we're just giving him a bath separately, mm. but I think at the age of maybe three to four months, that's when parents start to take baths with their kids like mm. that young. 
and they'll like soak them in the bath and they'll like go give them up like a proper bath yeah, yeah. together. But this like continues on and the facts show here that all the way up until maybe age 10, 22% of moms and sons take baths together. And then like when they're 12, 14%, all the way up to 15 years old, like 3%. Mm. That's three out of 100 kids yeah. will like take a bath with their mom at 15 years old. You'd be shocked yeah. as a Japanese as well. <laughs> I'm pretty shocked. Yeah, as a Japanese as oh, well. Okay. That happens. Well, this one was kind of weird where it says over 20 years old, 6%. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty shocking. Yeah, so the next one is father and daughter. Up to 8 years old, it says 14%. And then to 10 years old, 25% still take baths with their dad. How old were you when you took a bath with your dad? What was the age? <laughs> I should remember, but I remember like I felt kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things. How does that compare to your country? Let me know in the comments. So this one is kind of more uh, a general thing um, when they're growing up and how to kind of teach them or correct your child when they do something wrong mm. um, and just like kind of show them the way. In Japan, typically they show a lot more empathy teaching their children. So for example, instead of like saying, oh, you did something wrong, you're gonna get arrested. It's more of like, how is that gonna make the other kids feel when you take their toys or you do something, right? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like more of a show of like em like empathy. Yeah, exactly. How I brought up or like how my mother taught mm -hmm. me what I was doing wrong is usually to think of other people's feelings. He's mm -hmm. hurt, right? Do yeah. you want to do that or let's say I was screaming and then jumping around in like a public place and then my mother would be like don't bother people you know like not only the feelings but yeah. also like you don't want to bother other people and we say like so it's like how it's gonna make others feel so you don't want to kind of disturb harmony you don't uh, yeah, want to yeah, disturb yeah, yeah. like the peace everyone is quiet mm -hmm. always think about others hmm. life theme <laughs> it's not like, oh, you're, you're gonna get arrested, or you're gonna, no. you're breaking the rules. No, she never said that. I think it's great to be able to get along with a group, mm -hmm. but then at the same time, as someone that's always trying to get along with a group, you kind of yeah. lose your opinion and your yeah. thoughts, <laughs> and yep. so you don't actually think on mm -hmm. your own. You're always thinking, okay, what the, what does the group want to think? Mm -hmm. Maybe we have to kind of have a mix in there so, so that. Man. Our son has kind of also, you know, considers yeah. the group and is empathetic and wants the best for the group, but also has an own opinions about things. And maybe we'll be okay to kind of stick out once in a while. Yeah, 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 totally. I think, to be honest, like me growing up, always have to think about others. I have to put others' feeling before what I want to do. So I never get to do what I want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? That sucks. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I feel bad for her. So I guess I'm not going to do that. You know that kind of thing? That will like lose your personality or lose your you know, like, identity. Does yeah. it make sense? You won't develop your own uniqueness. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We'll see. Before we continue, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this video, Boksu. If you don't already know, Boksu provides a gourmet experience of Japanese snacks delivered to your front door. And with the holidays just around the corner, Boksu is a perfect holiday gift for loved ones near and far. They work with traditional Japanese factories some over 100 years old to provide you with unique snacks. And each monthly box has its own unique theme, so you get new snacks every time. First time users will get a Seasons of Japan box, and after that, you'll get a theme box like this one. Right when you open up the box, you get this nice booklet that takes you through each snack as well as information about Japan. You get 10 to 25 snacks in your box depending on the package you choose. All hand-picked local Japanese flavors from all over Japan. So get 10% off your own authentic Japanese snack box from Boksu and save up to $47 using my code PALO10 and link in the description. That said, let's continue on with the list. So another interesting thing about Japanese culture and raising kids is that discipline is not only from parents, but it's also from groups, meaning that you go to school or you join like clubs and the discipline is kind of like shared throughout the community. So it's not just from your parents, which could be a good and bad thing, I guess. Uh, maybe in some cultures you're like, no, the parents are the ones that are responsible for the discipline. But in Japan, it's kind of like a shared communal thing. Yeah, I feel like as I grew up, yeah. I was always in the environment that I have follow the rule mm -hmm. that applies at school, the club, after school, school. So I think if you're in Japan, you're naturally going to be disciplined. Yeah, um, I think what's also interesting is even as a little kid in school, you clean all together. I'll be walking by like nurseries 
and all see like kids literally wiping down the entrance of the school mm. and like wiping down like the elementary the school? like nursery or something. A nursery school. I feel like I started in elementary school. Okay. But yeah, but it's good to learn how to be responsible for your own room. The kids were like could barely stand and they were like wiping, <laughs> they were like teaching they were so cute. Yeah, they were teaching them how to like wipe the the windows and like <laughs> they probably not yeah. like cleaning that. No, one. no, no. They were they were terrible. <laughs> cleaning yeah, they're learning they're learning so, so cute. they teach them at like, such a young age i guess to sum it all up the parents don't have to discipline the child by themselves they have mm. the community they have the schools yeah. they have the circles they have like you know the clubs to yeah. help discipline so this one was another surprising thing especially just walking around in tokyo which is like one of the massive city is seeing kids walk to school by themselves and you know they're small they're, they're probably like five or six years old mm. and they're walking oh, to there. school by themselves in the city not only are they walking but they're taking the trains mm -hmm. right they're taking the buses yes. and they're all by themselves um, shoot wolfie when he's five years old we're gonna mm. let him like walk around the city nah, all by himself than, uh... When you were growing up, did you walk around by yourself? I did. I'm from really countryside, and there's like other big kids in that like close neighborhood. Yeah. So we meet up in the morning, and then we all go together. And there's always big kids watch out for little kids. Yeah. So I think it was pretty safe. In that case, like mm. the kids walked in like as a group. Mm. It wasn't like they were cool, individuals. Cool, cool. But I've seen cases where I've seen kids just like yeah, by in themselves. Yeah, Tokyo. Yeah on the train and bus yeah. so I see them all, the time, all by themselves yeah we'll have to see whether or not that's gonna be okay for us but yeah it seems relatively safe like, yeah it'll be it's okay. okay and I mean good thing we put that GPS tracker in his <laughs> <laughs> and this next one was kind of a pleasant surprise and it's how healthy kids eat here in Japan mm. Right? Very um, healthy. <laughs> very, very healthy. Compared to the States. Compared to the States, yeah. I don't know about other countries and what they mm, serve so for yeah, lunch. Yeah. yeah, so in Japan, they have Kyushoku. Yeah. Do you want to explain a little bit more about it? So Kyushoku, it's usually served for elementary school and junior high, maybe yeah. some high school. I don't know, maybe not. Like 92% or something of the schools are using it. So like basically almost all of the schools. Mm -hmm. are, are using Kyushoku, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's very balanced. The yeah. menu changes every single day. And they have that Eiyoshi, the, yeah. the per, you know, nutrition, 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 nutrition. Yeah. Plan everything out for a whole month, every month. So the Kyushoku company actually like, like cooks it and serves it. Yeah, so like what exactly, what would you have? So what you get in Kyushoku, it's very balanced, usually carb, soup, and yeah. main dish and like side dishes. Yeah. I, I actually don't remember exactly, but for example, like white rice with like green peas on top yeah. and miso soup with mushroom, tofu, and seaweed in it. Main dish would be hamburger yeah. and side dish would be like golden <clears throat> sonokomae, yeah. spinach, and sesame, mm -hmm. and some kind of pickles or something. It wouldn't be the same every day, they would just alternate throughout the week. So you have like yeah. an entire month's like worth of menu. Yeah, every day is different. And oh, and you get gyunyu. And milk. And what's interesting is that the monthly fee for that is about. Oh, it's so four, cheap. Yeah, yeah. 4,300 on average. It's something right? like that, yeah. That's for it's elementary less... school and then about 4,900 yen yeah. for junior high. I can just. Yeah. Get that yeah. I wanna get that too. <laughs> it's so cheap. Yeah, it's because they're producing meals for 92% of the schools in, in Japan, right? Because they make it in volume. Yeah, moms don't have to think of the menu every single day or like yeah. cook, you know, making the bento is, is such a work. So. But that's still something that they do. Like a lot of moms will still make the bento. I know, I know, I know. And they do, but like on weekends or... Yeah. So yeah, I just remember in my school we had like pizza and like a cheeseburger and tater tots and the cheeseburger was like small and not very delicious <laughs> school's trying to kill you <laughs> yeah it was just the most unhealthy wow. food ever I'm, I'm glad that wolfie has like healthy options but if we so decide man. to make food for him then that's pretty cool yeah and i think just overall it teaches kids like good food education right ah, so that, and yeah. so they know like okay this is not good for me mm -hmm. like i shouldn't be eating i know. think at least you think the kyushoku as a standard like yeah. a he not healthy but standard food like yeah. what you should have in a meal and then 
I think this last one is maybe will haunt us if Wolfie ever watches this video is it's not out of the ordinary for kids to grow up with their parents and mm -hmm. live with them after they graduate from high school mm -hmm. and college. Very common. In fact, 18 to 34 year old single men, about 69% of them still live with their parents. I think women, it's about 59%. It's common. I mean, 34 years mm. old and still living with your parents is quite a big deal in some other like Western countries. Yeah. But in Japan, yeah. it's normal. I wouldn't get surprised if somebody tells me like, oh, I live with my parents. You'd be like, oh, okay. But like Western person would have a different reaction, right? Yeah. Wolfie, if you're watching this, <laughs> you might be living with us at 34. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that concludes the video. If you like this video, help us out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more of these type of videos, day in life videos, Japan guides, hit that subscribe button and the bell button, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.